gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. All right, we're going to sing a song right now. We got some things to talk about. Got about two videos to do. Not going to take very long. We're going to talk about criminal court cases. Give you guys some basic facts. Got some earth, wind, and fire. You hear it in my background? Yeah. And while that's playing in my background, and they're just going to be singing a song, okay, for us? And while they're singing, we're going to talk. There's a young lady. She was in Texas. Now, this is 1989. I mean, excuse me. 1989. Excuse me. 1989. So don't think that people started with all of this stuff in the 90s. Now, let me tell you where she made. She made a couple of mistakes because she was part of one of the movements. At least that's what the court's going to say. She wanted to appear in her proper persona. So she appeared pro per and not pro se. She, understanding the definition of pro per, pro persona, and the difference of pro se, brought it up as an argument. The court said, that's semantics, we ain't hearing it. Okay, literally, they said it's semantics. So the argument had been rejected by the Court of Appeals. And it was rejected as semantics. Now, here is the one we're going to talk about. This is one about witnesses. <laughs> uh, again, second, the complaint and conviction must be supported by the testimony of two witnesses. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the special appearance thing later. Uh, he says that the argument on this point is biblical in origin. However, the state of Texas has no such requirement. Of course it does. Every state has a requirement that, oh, I'm sorry, let me show y'all the requirement in law for a conviction against a so-called criminal defendant. You guys don't mind, do you? You can go to the U.S. Constitution. Oh, by the way, I need to apologize. I told y'all it was the Fifth Amendment the last time I spoke with y'all. I said Fifth Amendment. It's not the Fifth Amendment, y'all. It's Sixth Amendment. Fifth Amendment is important. We're going to show you why the Fifth Amendment, why I said the Fifth Amendment. Okay, but we're going to talk about Sixth Amendment. And we're going to skip all this attorney and criminal prosecution stuff. And we're going to talk about the right is preserved or reserved or secured that in every criminal prosecution doesn't matter if it's civil criminal. Anybody who is being accused of a crime has a right to be confronted with witnesses, not witnesses. Witnesses, more than one, against him. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we just showed you, this ain't no, just no, quote, unquote, um, biblical issue. Okay? Or, have the compulsory process obtaining witnesses in the individual's favor. Witnesses. Okay? We're going to, you know what, I like Earth, Wind, and Fire, but we're going to switch. We're going to go to September. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, witnesses. I'm going to show you that Congress, remember, you can pull up the Mulberry versus Madison case where the Supreme Court expressed that Congress, not a single word was chosen in the Constitution that wasn't specifically and particularly chose. There's a reason for that. Let me explain it to you, if you don't mind. Sometimes it's hard to explain it to people without showing you what we're talking about. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. You know, you can call me Willis all you want. But I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm sorry, i got to connect to the internet. Pause, y'all, okay? Because when I do the videos, i got to disconnect. So give me a second. You know what? Hold on. Let's see if I can just hit the back button. Because it's still, oh, okay, it is safe. Whew, that would have been a headache. So I ain't got to connect to nobody's internet. I, I, I was already here. Let's uh, bring it up to 300. It ain't going to bring it up to 300. But ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me show you this. Criminal case to be a witness without the ES against himself. Hmm. So they did know the difference between the two words. Because he couldn't be a witnesses against himself. So Congress understood the plurality 
of a word. Interesting. So in every criminal matter, ladies and gentlemen, in every criminal matter, wait on. Make, make sure you understand. This is not an argument for the court. This is the law. And you got to understand how to argue the law. It won't let me go forward. It says you ain't showing them that again. So when y'all get a chance to look at the Sixth Amendment, look what it says at the very beginning in all criminal matters. All criminal matters. Individuals should have the right to have more than one witness. Ladies and gentlemen, every single time it's an officer who's filing a complaint, like in her case, and they say that's good enough. No, it isn't. The officer is an officer of the court. That is not good enough. Okay? The law says there has to be witnesses. And you can't be forced to testify against yourself, but the first thing they do is they use fingerprints and your photo because you give fingerprints and photo, and you do it willingly. So you, anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. By giving up your photo, you're saying something. Oh, man, that's saying something. Okay? Sorry. Y'all got to stop giving up y'all's rights. Now, you're not giving, when you go into court, they say, do you waive your rights? You say, yes, I do waive every single one of these statutory rights. I don't need no statutory rights. I got secured rights. Shoot, you keep your statutory rights and your privileges. That's what people should be saying. Now, we have to go back to the other one. So y'all hold on a second. Let me get back there. It's this one right here. Now, the reason why we... Uh oh, okay. The reason why we're here, because there's another thing. This thing about everybody want to appear by special appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, do not listen to what these stupid courts say. Special appearance, according to the Supreme Court, is still an appearance. It is the word appearance that you need to be afraid of because it's a legal term. The word appearance or appear allows the defendant to appear in a civil case. To attack the court's jurisdiction. Once you appear, you can attack the court's jurisdiction. That's why people lose. That's why they lose. Just that simple. So, ladies and gentlemen, stop listening to these persons do these videos. Okay, notice what she says. Not for legal assistance, but for biblical, scriptural assistance through which all laws are made. This request was denied. She did wish to retain state bar licensed counsel, or she did not wish to retain state bar licensed counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a right to counsel of choice. You can be assisted by a non-lawyer friend. Okay? You can be assisted for anyone for counsel, any type of counsel. Doesn't matter if it's spiritual, scriptural, or whatever. That's your choice. It's the right to counsel of choice, not the right to attorney of choice. Look, Section 1 of the 10 of Texas Constitution authorizes the accused in criminal prosecution to appear by himself or counsel or both. It does not say appear. Go ahead and look at it. Because they cannot force you to submit to the court's jurisdiction. Okay, and oh, by the way, they cannot force you to plead. When you enter a plea, you submit to the court's jurisdiction. The term counsel, as used in the Constitution, means an advocate, counselor, or pleader. One who assists his clients with advice and pleads for him in open court. It does not mean one not admitted to practice law by the Texas State Supreme Court. That's a lie. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a lie. There is no law requiring that your counsel be somebody who is licensed to practice law. There is nowhere in the Constitution where it says you must have a license to practice law attorney. Now look, I can't tell you guys what to do. This is an appeals court. The only way she can get past the appeals court is to do a writ of certiorari to the Supreme Court, which the Supreme Court denies most writ of certiorari. So what do you do? Ladies and gentlemen, you sue the state. What do you mean you sue the state? You sue the state for denying your due process rights. These are all matters for a jury to decide. So you sue based on your right to have counsel of choice 
whomever you want. The same as, now look, <laughs> there was a guy in Texas, and in Texas, he appealed because they denied him his rape. And the court highlighted it because he wanted to have someone appear as a witness, and the court denied him. And the Court of Appeals overturned the conviction because they spoke of how a young man came into court and said he wanted to call Jesus as his witness. And gentlemen, everybody knows that Jesus exists. So how in the world could they deny him the right to call Jesus as a witness? Now, I know how absurd it seems. And that's what the court wanted to do. They didn't want to have the right to religion and all that be an issue, so they allowed him to call Jesus a witness. But the thing about it, Jesus can't testify. What do you mean? He can. Ah, he can if a person knew the scriptures well. But then you couldn't answer for the scripture. You would have to let the scriptures answer. You'll run into a problem because they know the scriptures just as well as you do. I'm not saying and I'm not suggesting try that. I'm just Letting you know that an individual actually did that. Called Jesus as a witness and the court allowed him. I don't know how the case turned out. I never I never cared. So I never researched it. I just know that that's what the court said that the individual did exercising his right. See, the right to counsel of choice is not the right to counsel of the court's choice. And that Supreme Court junk, this is the right of the court's, court's choice. No, 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 no. You don't get to have counsel whom the Supreme Court says is your counsel. What the? And by the way, the counsel, uh, if we go to this, if you go to Article 1, Section 10 of the Texas Constitution, you will not see anything about appearing by himself. The court cannot force you to submit to their jurisdiction. It has to be voluntary. But they're using these words intentionally. Give me a second. Yeah, it's not going to have me uh, click on those notes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm only showing you this case. This case, oh, look at that. Driving without a license. Another one of those cases. Now, she brings that up. Now, let's see if they, if they get her. The fifth point of error is overruled. Um, we assume without so holding that this is indeed a variant. And it's certainly not fatal. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. Was charged with a Class C misdemeanor, therefore the state could not proceed against her without obtaining an indictment. Second, alleges that there exists a fatal variance between the officer's citation, which charged her with driving without a valid C driver's license, and the complaint which charges her with with driving a vehicle without a valid Class A, B, or C driver's license. If we assume without holding that this indeed is indeed a variant, it is certainly not fatal. Here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot charge her with this because this was not the original issue. They did not charge her originally with driving without an ABC license, so she was correct on that. And the, the complaint has to be specific. She was not charged with an A or B or C. She was charged only with a C. Okay. Anyway, I don't know what her argument was. That's why I read it. I wanted to see what her argument was. I haven't read this, the whole case. I was looking for something. Now, hold on. I, this, is, this is a point right here. Claims that the trial court was without authority to enter a not guilty plea for her. Asked if she wished to enter a plea. She responded that she was innocent of violating the contract with the state of Texas because no contract exists. A contract does exist. She's one of the people of the state. A contract does exist. Okay, when the trial court attempted to record this response as a plea of not guilty, she objected, re-urging her argument for lack of contract and the defendant refused to plea, and a plea of not guilty was entered in her behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, she said she was innocent. Okay? She entered a plea. Okay. Here, they say it's overruled. 
they need to deal with the issue as to whether or not the court can enter a plea in her behalf. But she did enter a plea. And you notice how they keep going to the code? That's the problem. This is not the law. She doesn't challenge it. She knew some things, and that's probably because she had help. But she didn't know enough. Now, she says the state failed to define driving and operating. Ladies and gentlemen, operating a motor vehicle, that is a profession. That's a professional term. I, I used to be an owner-operator. Okay? A doctor operates. She claims harm and effect that these words were used interchangeably at trial and in the charging instrument. These terms are synonymous. There is no error. These words are not synonymous. Driving and operating are not the same word. That's why a truck driver has an operator's license. Go ahead and take a look at it. It specifically says operator's license, or it used to. And a regular... Now, I took my vehicle off the, uh, the rolls, registration rolls. And they literally said, this is not a permit to operate a vehicle on the highways. Thank you. I don't need a permit to operate a vehicle on the highways. Thank you for telling me that I don't need a permit to operate a vehicle on the highway. And it clearly shows it was mine. That was my vehicle. That's all I needed. I took my vehicle off the registered rolls. Now, I cannot walk you through that. You're going to have to do your research. Now, let's go through this. That driving a motor vehicle is an inalienable right and unregulated uh, right, which may not be interfered with by the state of Texas. Le sorry, ladies and gentlemen, driving a motor vehicle, pay attention, motor vehicle. Okay, it's a vehicle. Uh -uh, that's commerce. Driving an automobile is not commerce. A vehicle is commerce. Vessels, vehicles, commerce. One of them is sea, one of them is land. Vessel, vehicle. You don't want that. All right. She argues that it is contrary to the federal constitution in the state of Texas to require a private citizen to secure a driver's license before operating. A, before operating. They used that term. She didn't use this term. They used this term. A vehicle on the public roads. Actually, again, they get to... Now, you know, they don't explain why. They just say they overrule her. Therefore, we will address the two points of error together. Although she puts forth a good deal of time and energy <laughs> vehemently arguing this point, it is clear that Texas, a license or permit to drive an automobile on the public highway and streets is a privilege and not property and or property rights. That's a lie. And... The document that we've shown you, the laws you did not know exist, they've already established that. They've already established that. That case happened right after this. Go ahead and look at the laws you didn't know exist and type in driver's license. And you'll see the case where you'll see in Texas there's no such thing as a driver's license. Now it says this privilege is subject to reasonable regulation. Sorry, it is not a privilege. But because she came in as a citizen, subject of the state, and because she has a, they're getting her for driving, that means she's a subject. Ladies and gentlemen, they do have an interest to public safety, but only if she's endangering public safety. There was no charge that she was endangering public safety. So she cannot be charged with that, but you have to know how to argue the point. Okay? Now she claims the peace officer lacked probable cause to stop her vehicle. She argues that him stopping her for a defective muffler was merely a pretext stop to confirm his suspicion that she did not have a valid driver's license. This argument fails because the officer did not need a pretext to stop her vehicle. Why not? Peace officers may stop and detain any motor vehicle operator for the purpose of determining whether such a person has a driver's license. No, they, no, they can't. The police officer cannot stop you just because he feels like it. Whew. The right to travel on the public highways, that would make this an unconstitutional act. 
And I promise you nobody's challenging it. Okay. Oh, and by the way, you see how he does the annotated statutes this time? They don't do that cold thing this time. They actually go to the annotated statutes. Now you got to challenge Congress. But again, you got to know what you're doing when you're doing this. So, ladies and gentlemen, how do you handle a case like this? How do you deal with all of this? After going over this and knowing what things not to say. Well, when the appeals court do what they did, then you go to the Court of Federal Claims and you sue the United States on behalf of the state for violating your secured rights. See, you don't come in as a citizen, you come in as a civilian. Okay, military courts have no jurisdiction. You must understand, all of these courts are military courts. You don't go in there arguing that point. You go in there arguing the March 9, 1933 Act. And when they conferred so much authority upon the president under that military act, which is the Trading with the Enemy Act, is the military act, then the courts became subject under the rule of that act, which is why they're acting the way they're doing. And you challenge the act as unconstitutional because the Constitution never conferred that type of authority on Congress. It's a violation of the separation of powers clause. It's not, and no, 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 you ask for a jury trial. Because those are matters for a jury to decide, not a matter for a judge to decide. The problem people have been having is they've been allowing judges to decide things. Stop letting the judge decide. Tell them, I want a jury to decide that. The moment the judge objects, the moment he says something contrary to what you're saying, say thank you. Thank you for demonstrating that there is an actual controversy. Whew, I thought I would have to prove that there's a controversy, but you just did by arguing with me. So that looks like it's going to be a matter for the jury to decide. Oops. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah, they're not going to like me for that one. Uh, going to get in a lot of trouble for that one. But life goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, I just realized I got a solar panel that went to the flow. I got to go pick that thing up today. All right. There are several things that we have to talk about. So I'm going to let this video end. For those of you who have criminal proceedings that you're dealing with criminal cases, hopefully the information that was just presented will do you some good. I have, um, Penny has had 11 puppies, and three of them are deceased because she lays on top of them, and she just flops. Uh, she, as a matter of fact, while I'm talking to you guys, I'm going back here to check on her. But what happens is she puts all of her weight on them. And they whine and they whine and they whine. And hold on. Let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, just have to count them because now she's in a different position. And so I have to count them to make sure everybody knows what they're doing. Sorry, I got one here. Uh, it's the darker one. He's gonna be, he's gonna be a terror. But I did him and see how he does in the hand because they're tired. They whine whining and whining. And this is the biggest whiner out of all of them. So I'm gonna put him back down so he can be all right. And got, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I got all eight. I got one in my hand right now. When they go to sleep, these things are all over the place. And he just flops out. Wait, you boy, you girl. He boy. So this one is going to be okay. He looks like a, uh, he almost looks like he's a wolf. But he ain't wolf. They're not mixed with any type of wolf. All right. So all the doggies are doing okay. I changed her position. And I'm glad when she did so, she didn't lay on top of any of them. Because that would have been very, very difficult for me to handle. So there you go. Now you guys get to see what I have been going through all day, every day. Haven't been able to get nothing accomplished. Because I got to go check on her. 
They are about five inches long, not including the tail, and about two and a half inches off the ground. So she, they, they can't stand yet. They crawl. Um, and so far, these are doing okay. So I'm going to keep them inside. And my hope is that I'll be able to get through the night because I know I won't get any sleep. But I'm going to keep an eye on them for the next couple of days, and then I'll put her back outside with them. This is, at the end of this video, just an update for those people who are interested in uh, puppies and asking about Penny and Max. Um, we'll talk about everything later. Y'all, want y'all to understand, you can win with the right arguments. Stop going in there listening to these people on YouTube. Everything I said, I just showed you. Stop going in there listening to these people on YouTube. Now, that person didn't have YouTube in 1989. There was no YouTube. There was only conversations with people like myself, 1989, but people who were older than me. This person was in Texas. They knew what they knew, but they did not know how to defeat the court's argument because they hadn't done the research. They hadn't looked at the Supreme Court knock down things. You guys want to win? Then bring the case against the United States of America and Texas as an agent for the United States of America. How do we know? Because Texas and all the other states agreed to abide by the United States Constitution. That's why each Constitution's Bill of Rights mirrors the U.S. Bill of Rights. Okay? The only thing is, I think Louisiana claims that they don't have any common law. That's why. Of course, Louisiana has common law. Okay? But the reason why Louisiana says they don't have any common law is because they're not talking about prior court cases. They're talking about the real common law. Shh, don't tell nobody. Okay? The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, is a lot of people don't have enough knowledge of all of this to go into court and speak for themselves. A lot of people go into court and they bring up baseless arguments that they don't realize is baseless. They don't realize they've already been shot down 100,000 times. That's people for you. Hey, I had to go pick up this solar panel because I don't want it on the ground. Um, matter of fact, that's why I have two solar arrays. And that's why the solar array that's connected to the panel that's on the ground, I was wondering why it was so low. Okay? Because it's not at its full power. And it should be at its full power. All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all take care of yourselves. Got to remember, we got to take it back to September. I'm out.